Today let's talk about inflammation. Pain can have many reasons, but in most cases, the root cause is inflammation. Whether it is the stomach, the heart, your brain, or you name it, most people think first of arthritis and bone problems when they hear the word inflammation. But this is only a tiny part of the whole story. Today we know, that many chronic illnesses have their root cause in an inflammatory process. When inflammation is present, your body goes into a response mode. It sends out lymphocytes to take care of a burning fire. Inflammation can be basically everywhere, not only in your joints. Most astonishing inflammatory processes are in the brain and latest also the heart. There are quite a number of Alzheimer experts who are convinced, that Alzheimer's disease is an inflammation of the brain. One of them is Professor Pat McGuer from Canada. When you listen to what he has to say about inflammation in the brain and that this is the real cause of Alzheimer's disease, there is hardly anything you can argue against it. look for cells that show us something about immunology functions within the brains and color these samples with a distinct color. We could not find a connection to a virus. However, when I first saw these colored samples, I was shocked. We saw cells that we had never seen before. These were not the old, well-known deposits like plaques, which were visible under the microscope, but new cells in high numbers that look like so-called microlia. These only occur in such a large number under one circumstance, namely when there is an inflammation. Pat McGear researches in the library. Is it possible that no one before him has ever seen those cells in the brains of Alzheimer's patients? Is Alzheimer's eventually an inflammation of the brain? Finally, he discovers a scientific article dating back to the year 1919. The article reports about microlia cells in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. McGear realizes that this scientist was following the same path 90 years ago. Inflammation of the brain as a possible cause of dementia. That theory that had not been followed further. McGear decides to change that. There's a tiny silver lining here. The question arises, should people who are not affected with rheumatism use anti-inflammatories in order to protect themselves from Alzheimer's? Based on what we know about the human brain and what we have learned in the non-study, my conclusion is, you bet they should. Professor Pat McGear even recommends to take anti-inflammatories to prevent you from getting Alzheimer's. The latest big inflammatory news was the inflammation of the heart. It is said, that it happens more often in young male adults after vaccination than in other population groups. Well, this sounds really scary when the heart is inflamed. Dot how can we measure inflammation? There is one blood test, that can measure the degree of inflammation in your body, it is called C-reactive protein test. Just ask your doctor when you next time have your blood tested, whether they can test for this too. So, what can be done against any inflammation in our body? Well. A healthy lifestyle is always a good advice, with lots of vegetables, not even lots of fruit. Anti-inflammatory drugs. Weaker anti-inflammatory medicines, so-called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These include, for example, aspirin, diclofenac, etadalac, indomitacin, naproxen, ibuprofen and piroxicam. These are classic NSAIDs currently prescribed for symptomatic treatment of inflammatory rheumatisms and osteoarthritis. But these NSAIDs show certain unwanted side effects and have a particular tendency to induce the formation of ulcers in the stomach or gut. These unwanted side effects are connected to the inhibition of the enzyme cyclooxygenase 1, COX-1, a constitutive isoform. 
A further great disadvantage is that the medication has to be administered over a long period of time, especially in the treatment of chronic inflammation. Stomach pains or digestive disruption are just the beginning when taking NSAIDs, followed by severe side effects in the stomach and gut areas. The more powerful anti-inflammatory medications, cyclooxygenase 2 or COX-2 inhibitors, carry an increased risk of serious heart problems, as well as circulatory complaints. Moreover, they add stomach and gut ulcers to your inflammation problem. In addition, these powerful anti-inflammatory medications are only available on prescription. Herbal Alternatives There are a number of herbal alternatives against inflammation, which obviously can be taken on the long run, without fearing of any side effects. One in particular stands out, it is made out of the most precious Chinese anti-inflammation herbs. Its name is Shiwan Anti-Inflammatory, see link in the description below. Another herbal anti-inflammatory which can be used long term is meant for Alzheimer sufferers and those who have the genes inherited and want to prevent the disease. Also here we have put a link in the description. In these times it is better to be safe than sorry, because inflammation has never been such a big issue, especially when it comes to the inflammation of the heart. Whatever works as anti-inflammatory and can be taken long time can do the trick.